Well, good morning and welcome to Suburban Jessup once again. Um, in this video, we're going to cover the basics, very basics, of how to forge a full-size antler shed. Now this is the shed that I was commissioned to copy right here, and as you can tell, it's a full-size copy. Okay, it's not a scaled-down replica, it's full-size. So what we're going to cover, uh, probably going to be a series of videos, not just one video. Uh, but what we're going to cover is we're going to cover uh, from laying it out and measuring everything to the texturing, uh, the shaping, the welding, the grinding. Uh, we're going to cover all that. Uh, probably going to be kind of like a 20,000 foot overview. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be, you know, way too long. Uh, but I hope you get some use out of it. I hope you find it interesting. If you do, I like it and share it with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Uh, that helps me make more of these videos. So, uh, I appreciate it, and let's get down to it. The first thing we're going to cover is how I lay this out. And I get everything measured. So I've tried the cloth tapes that seamstresses use. I've tried uh, several different ways to measure this. And I'll be honest with you, a roll of solder is still the best way I've found to do it. I start right here and I come right along the back side here. here the full length down to the boss. Once I do that, then I come down here and I take my sharpie and I put a sharpie mark on my saw. Once I do that, then I come up here I lay it out here fairly straight. This stuff's nice and flexible. And then I come up here and I pull a tape on that. And I end up right at 40, 43 inches is what we've got from the tip to here. And I draw me a squiggly line on the paper here. This is where I started. And I mark it 43 inches. That gives me the length of the main beam. Now, let me turn this thing around where you can see, and we'll do the rest of it. So what I do now is I just get my ruler out here, my yardstick. And I come up here and I come down the middle of each time to where it intersects the main beam right here. Not up here where it intersects the main beam down here in the center. Okay? And I come up there and on these I just stick my finger where it needs to be and then I come down here and I measure and that just happens to be 10 inches. Okay. Then I come up here and I write that down on my book. Now I go one, two, three, four, five. So this is number five. I always start at the boss. One, two, three, four, five. Five is, is 10 inches. I do the same with number four. I come up here, 
and that's 14 and 14 and three quarters. And I write it down on my book, and so on and so forth, until I get down to here. That gives me the length of my times. Okay. Now, the next thing we got to have is we got to have our distance from here to here to here to here to here to the end. Okay. So I always start from this end when I lay these out as far as where the tines go. Because down here we're going to have a handle. We're not going to have a definite stop. Up here we have a definite stop. If we start from this end and we end up too short or too long, too long we could do something about, but too short we could do something, but we're going to have to weld them. You know, there's enough welding involved in this, we don't need to make it difficult. So we start from our known end right here, and we measure down if that makes sense to you. So we just come up here, we've got a couple of good kinks on our solder. We come up here, and we guesstimate where the middle of that is. And then we come up here, we measure that. And our first distance from the end is 10 inches from here to center. Okay? Now, we go from center to here. And that's 9 inches. So on and so forth. And we mark it down in our book as we go. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is all my notes. This is purely for reference, okay? But that gives us all of our distances that we need, all our measurements that we need, okay? Next thing we do is we look at it. If you look at it, it gets wide. It's relatively the same here, which is about two inches in diameter. But then when you get past the third time, it gets bigger. Okay, now it doesn't get much bigger in this plane, but in this plane it gets a lot bigger. So we're going to have to add there. And then if you look up here, it stays bigger. Okay, so we're going to have to add some here. But basically, we can taper a length of bar for the main beam. Okay, and a nice even taper. And this is about 23, 28, about 28 inches of taper, okay? And then the rest of it is basically 2 inch, okay? So you want to take a good look at it and get your game plan on how you're going to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the main beam and we're going to taper the main beam first. And the main beam, for the main beam, we're going to use uh, 3 feet of 2 inch round 1018 uh, coal roll. Now the reason we're using coal roll is because my supplier at the time didn't have any any hot roll. Uh, hot roll is cheaper uh, so you might as well use hot roll uh, if you can get it. But my supplier didn't have hot roll and I was on kind of a, a time deadline on this so I ended up using, using uh, uh, coal roll. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to hammer that under the power hammer and we're going to taper that down, okay? After we do that, then we're going to take and we're going to do our tines. Now we've only got five tines. Uh, and if you look, this one's rather small, this one's a little bigger, this one's small, this one's bigger, and this one's uh, small. So what we're going to do, relatively small I should say, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to forge our tines from uh, inch and a half hot rolled, and we're going to forge uh, we're going to forge uh, four uh, four of them or three of them from inch and a half hot rolled, and we're going to forge four of them from uh, inch and a quarter hot rolled. Okay, that gives us two to choose from as we pick and choose which ones match better. If you just forge uh, five of them, 
then you're stuck with what you got. If you forge seven, it doesn't take that much longer to forge seven, and it gives you a little bit of a choice. I like having a choice. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay? So at this point, we have our main beam uh, tapered and textured. We have our tines tapered and textured. And we're going to start uh, the process of building it. The first thing we do is we take the main beam and we rough bend it. Okay? Uh, as you'll see in the video, uh, I set this in a pipe vise and I, uh, I put, it, uh, put it in a pipe vise and I heat it up with a, uh, with a rosebud and I bend this and this. Now when it comes to this bend here, I find it's easier once I establish where it needs to be to heat it up in the forge and just use the weight from here down to bend that. I just face it the way it needs to go and I bring it down on the anvil and I bend it. Okay. Uh, so I do it both on the bench with the rosebud and I do it in the forge uh, using the weight of, of, of the, uh, the hammer. Now, as I bend, this is why we use the, the soldering wire, okay? Uh, as I bend, I measure. And I get my bends where I want them to be. And I use my soldering wire to measure. Most of the time I don't even get a tape measure out from this point on. I just come up and I see where that needs to be on the, on the actual antler and then I bring it over and I put it on there and I put me a mark where I need to make the bend. Okay, I don't even, I don't, I don't even use a tape measure. Okay? So I get the whole thing bent. Once I get it bent, then I take the tines and I, I take my measurements and I don't, I don't even look at that, okay? I just come up here and I pull me a measurement here where I want it to be and I got a pile of tines. Like I said, I've got a pile of these tines. This is an uh, inch and a quarter, this is an inch and a half. I take my, it's going to be kind of awkward, but because I'm trying to show you, but I come up here and I just lay that on there, on the original, figure out where I remember, i got to keep in line with where my main beam's at, not up here, back here where my main, main beam's actually running. And I come up here, and I just come down here, and I make a mark with my Sharpie, right there, Now once I do that, now, like I said we're going to pretend this is the original. Once I do that, I come up here, whichever size tine I'm going to use, and I figure out exactly, relatively, what angle I need that. And then I come up here, and I do that angle, save myself some, some welding if you see that. And then I cut that on a bandsaw. And that gives me my times. Now, like I said, I come up here, I get my first one, and I start from this end. I, I, I rough shape the time in the forge. Get, get a rough bend on it where I think it needs to be, and then I come up and I tack it. Now this is why I don't use saw, or, uh, uh, cloth tape. When I get ready to do the second one, I come up here, and I always measure from the end. I don't measure from the last one I did. I measure from the end. So I come up here on the, on the real antler. I come up here on the real shed. I go where I think the middle is going to be, about right there. Then I just come over to the steel one that's in the jig, and I lay that back down.
and I tack the second one on. Now we've already measured our second one, we've already bent our second one in the forge, we've cut it to length, we've cut the angle, now we mark our, our steel, we bring this over, we look at where it's positioned on the rack. They're not all in line. This one's down here at about, we'll call that 9. This one's a 10. This one comes up, it's still probably about 10. This is back to 9. This is about 830. And then this is the, the original main beam. So you got to watch where they're positioned along there. Okay? And you do that on down here and you weld them on. Once you weld them on, you get your basic welding done. Then you have to build up in here and in here and in here and in here and you have to make it flow. The neater a job you can do that, do on that, the more time you're going to save yourself with, uh, with grinding and blending that in. If you just gob that on there, you're going to fight it and fight it. You need to put nice welds in there. Okay? So once you get that welded up the for what I call the first pass and you get your webs and everything in there, then you take a grinder, a four and a half inch grinder, and you grind that down and you you blend it. Okay, you take some time and you blend it on all sides. Okay, once you get that blended the first time, you're gonna have craters, you're gonna have places you're not happy with. So what you want to do after that is you want to take and you want to fill those in and, and, and build it up. Now, on the second pass of welding, I took, and like I said, this gets bigger in here. So I took this and I built this up with weld and it tapers. Okay, I, I made that uh, smooth. Okay, I made that transition uh, easy. Okay. It flows. The, trans the transition flows. Now up here where this is thicker, I ended up taking a piece of, of a 5 16 rod and laying it along the inside here and welding that up in there to build that up wider here and, and or here. Okay, so this is thicker and I just, I, since that tapered, I went ahead and I just built that up with, with weld. Here, I put some filler rod in there, a piece of 5 16 and then I welded it up to get our girth here and our girth here. Okay. Once you get your second pass welded up, then once again you take it and you grind it and you blend it. Okay. Uh, once you grind it and blend it the second time, then you take a real good look at it all the way around. Once, once you do that and you look at it, uh, this time you use, I use a flap wheel this time, and I clean it up with a flap wheel after, the, after the, I use the grinder. Then I use a flap wheel, and I flap wheel it, you know, and, and get it blended. And then I look at it, and then I make any last minute adjustments with the third pass. Okay? <clears throat> three passes normally does it every once in a while. You might have to just touch up with a fourth, but three passes normally does it. When you get done with the third pass, all this should be smooth and blended in, okay? Now on this one down here, if you look at that, that actually came down and around here, so I had to put a pretty sharp bend here and then fill that in. Your eye will work just as hard, if not harder, than, than anything else uh, when you're doing these. You have to have a, an eye for it, you have to look at it, you have to uh, keep setting the original right next to it. You can do one without an original, but uh, it'd make it a lot easier if you've got an original to go by. So that's how we do that. Now the next step we take and we have to, now that we've ground that out, we've destroyed some of the texture that we put in earlier when we tapered the, when we tapered the tines and the main beam. So we've got to put the texture back and what I do is I use a cutoff wheel on a four and a half inch grinder and I come in here 
and I cut grooves back in, not too deep, you don't want to go too deep. Uh, and I cut the grooves back in, I do it on both sides, I do it wherever I need so that I don't have just, just any untouched places, okay? So I get that done and then in the small spots here and in here I take and I use a Dremel tool with cutoff wheels. Uh, but for the main part of it, I use a four and a half inch uh, grinder with a cutoff wheel because if you don't, you're going to burn up a lot of them little itty bitty wheels with a Dremel tool and you're going to find you're going to spend more time grind, uh, changing wheels than you are uh, grinding grooves. So once I get that done, then I take a flap wheel and I flap wheel everything. Everything, okay? From one end to the other. Now you'll notice on antlers, both deer antlers and elk, that down here they're, they're fairly rough, okay, because they don't get a lot of abrasion down here. But up here they're fairly smooth. So I hit her harder with the flap wheels up here till I just about don't have any texture left up here, okay. And then as I come down I leave a little more texture, okay. Once we get that done, we measure our full length again. We come down to our, I believe it was 43 inches. We come down here. At this point, we've got about that much more sticking out, and we've got a piece of pie poked onto it to handle it with. At this point, we cut that off, and we don't really want to cut it off straight. We want to kind of cut it from this way and from this way and give it a little bit of curvature. And then we want to take, we want to weld up kind of crown this end and then we take the welder and we go around here and we build up just a, 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 a ring around here probably about half inch high. Once we get that ring welded up all the way around then we just take and we real quick we run the MIG to give it this boss. That's how we do the boss. Okay. Once we get that done we stamp our name in it, our initials, and we have our shed. So that's a quick rundown. <clears throat> We're going to do this video series on how to do this. Uh, and we'll jump back and forth between actual while I'm actually doing it and parts of this again. But this is what we're going to cover in, in, in the Atmore series. Um, probably take us, you know, several times to get this thing put together, but this is where we're going to start. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, like I said, we're going to start uh, the series on actually how to do it. Uh, we'll start with uh, with doing the taper into the main beam and the, and the uh, tines and then we'll go into, uh, into texturing that'll probably be one video uh, and then we're probably going to shoot uh, uh, welding it together and blending everything and getting everything done in the second video and it may take a, th a third video uh, to get all that done we'll just see how it goes so thanks for watching today I appreciate it uh, if you found it useful, like I said, share it with your friends and like it. I appreciate it. That makes it to where I can make more of these. So, y'all have a good holiday. Merry Christmas. And uh, be safe. And bye.